My name is Ara Sarafian, and I'm the Executive Director of the Gomidas Institute here in London. My guest today is Dr. Vahakan Vardanyan in Hong Kong, who is the author of our latest publication, National Identity, Diaspora and Space of Belonging, an Armenian Perspective. Dr. Vardanyan is a political geographer who teaches at Han Academy in Hong Kong. However, he was born in Armenia um, in the former Soviet Union, so he's familiar with before and after uh, Armenia's independence, and has lived almost 20 years or around 20 years in Southeast Asia. He's familiar with a number of Armenian communities and, has, and his work is at the cutting edge of Armenian diaspora studies. Dr. Vardanyan, could you give us a brief introduction of your work, please? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sarafian, for uh, the brief introduction and also for the opportunity to present my work, my book. And I would also like to thank the audience uh, who, will, who is watching the presentation and for also uh, being interested in the issues related to uh, the homeland diaspora relationship and the development of uh, the diaspora. Uh, first of all, I would like to briefly uh, highlight uh, the, the key parts of key, key aspects of my uh, background, which uh, have helped me to shape my uh, strong interest in the diaspora homeland relationship, and uh, that in turn uh, have that has motivated me to go more in depth into the study of the diaspora and the relationship between Armenia and its global diaspora. As, I, as you have mentioned, I was born and grew up in Armenia and I was lucky enough to be uh, old enough to participate, to vote in the referendum for Armenia's independence, which was in 1991. And so I, that by then I lived in the largest country in the world by landmass, but at the same time in its smallest republic, which was the Armenian Soviet Republic. So I would like to specify this uh, just to highlight how uh, the perception of national identity uh, and the framework and the overall context of that identity can uh, develop over time. Uh, shortly after that, uh, after the, those events in the 90s, shortly after that, I went to, uh, to study in the United States. And uh, I, by that, by this, I visited and I lived in a country with the, which, which was the largest one by economy. And I have also lived in the largest country in the world by population, which is China. I have lived in uh, the smallest country in the region, which is a true city state uh, of Singapore. And currently I live in another city formation, which is a special administrative region of Hong Kong in China. So uh, besides this, uh, my life experience, I also have traveled uh, to a range of countries where we can find Armenian communities from the United States to Singapore and Hong Kong, from many cities in Australia to uh, India and Myanmar, where we have historically very important and uh, valuable communities. And also to I've traveled to Russia, Georgia, where we also have large Armenian communities. And my study and research background uh, has also been very helpful with regard to the motivation it has provided me to go deeper into this study. Uh, so the cognitive fields I have specialized in from economics to business administration and international affairs to political geography, what you have mentioned already, they have shaped the overall academic background uh, of mine. So, and this has been very helpful uh, in addition to the knowledge of languages. So then I, I can say this have provided me with an opportunity to, to go to study in, in more details. This field of diaspora and national identity and 
the context of uh, uh, diaspora relations with the homeland, and also the uh, most importantly the, uh, the the feeling of the uh, space of belonging of the diasporans. Uh, besides, I can also uh, add that I have participated in a range of pan-Armenian and other official events uh, of national importance for, for Armenia and the Armenians. And also I have been very uh, active, especially the recent, in the recent years, uh, by raising various issues um, related to national identity and the relations between the two parts of our nation. Uh, the Republic and the Diaspora, and also recognition of the Republic of Artsakh, and certainly the recognition of the Armenian Genocide. I have uh, pub pub uh, had publications in the Armenian media uh, about these topics. So this is in brief the background that I would like to highlight, but let's move to the uh, two more details about the book, which I would be I'll be happy to share with the audience. Can you see it well? Yes. Okay. So the book is titled, as you have uh, mentioned already, uh, Mr. Sarafan, National Identity, Diaspora and Space of Belonging, and From the Armenian Perspective. I, I want to specify here uh, why I'm saying from the Armenian perspective. I, I've studied the Armenians, uh, our nation, as a classical example of diaspora. And uh, I've, I've focused on the whole field from our perspective. At the same time, the approaches uh, applied in the book uh, can be to a certain extent, to a significant extent, I would say, uh, be applicable to other diasporas as well, other diasporas as well, in particular class, the classical cases. And diaspora is an is a area of study which has become more and more popular, so increasingly popular over the past uh, several decades. And as such, uh, the concepts related to diaspora transnationalism have, been, uh, have become very popular. So this book can be an attempt to further study uh, this field worldwide, and in particular related to us Armenians. So the book has been, attempt, has been an attempt to study the phenomenon of phenomenon of a classical diaspora case as the Armenians, and as I've mentioned, within the framework of political geography, in particular, the concepts of space and place, which are the foundational concepts of the field. And uh, book, the book itself is a study of communities which are geographically remote from Armenia, and in particular, Apart from different cities I visited and apart from different cities I have studied, the focus of the book is on two uh, largest Armenian communities uh, in, in the whole eastern part of the world. So I can say to the east from Iran, uh, the largest communities are in two cities in Sydney, Melbourne. And having Mr. Manukyan, Sarkis Manukyan here as a discussion, will be a pleasure so that we can also hear his perspective as an Armenian who lives in Sydney and he's very active as a diaspora. So the research has been conducted through, the obser through observations, through uh, interviews and discussions. Uh, when I talk about the book, of course, the readers will have a, a more detailed uh, understanding about the structure of the book. I can simply uh, specify that in the beginning, the book starts about Armenia. So it's an introduction, in brief introduction of the country, uh, the nation state being small, but connected to a global diaspora. So this is how I can specify the, uh, the, the, the essence, the nature of the, uh, of the Republic. And here I mentioned the Republic as the homeland and at the same time for many diasporans as a surrogate homeland, so not the historic homeland for many of, uh, of our fellow Armenians worldwide. Uh, in the book, the cornerstone year, cornerstone year is 1991, the year Armenia acquired its independence, really acquired its independence, so it will also consider the brief independent period of 1918, 1920, 
but also these four years have three other years have also been highlighted as, as important cornerstone years uh, when I discuss the connections between diaspora and Armenia. Uh, the years are 1988. That's the year, of course, of the of the beginning of the political uh, process known as the Karabakh movement. Uh, but uh, the year has also been uh, very notable for one more event, and uh, the the year of remembrance, the day of the remembrance of that event was yesterday, that very day. So the earthquake in 1988 became a cornerstone event, so that the Armenians worldwide had the first, uh, on a global scale, had, a, had the first chance to get uh, better connected to Armenia, to the Armenians in Armenia. Of course, the other year was 1994, the end of the uh, the first Artsakh war. Uh, certainly, the second Artsakh war of, of 2020. Uh, the whole work has been uh, structured, as I've mentioned, to uh, within the framework shaped by the concepts of diaspora, diasporans, uh, national identity, diaspora return, and space and place, as mentioned earlier. If I uh, talk about the main focus of the work is the largest part of the structure of the book, uh, the focus on the perception and transformation of that perception of, among the diasporans uh, with regard to their sense of national identity and space of belonging uh, is prevalent in the book and uh, uh, as well as the role of institutions and connection uh, to, uh, to the homeland, to Armenia. So when we talk about diaspora and diasporans, certainly there are some uh, interpretations which differ from each other. And I can say even there's a fallacy committed uh, by the, by, by throughout many years, even decades, uh, including by the homeland, by policymakers, uh, when it is, uh, when, when the discourse is about who is diaspora, what is diaspora and who are, who the diasporans are. So the classical approaches and the contemporary approaches have been brought in the book. And I can even say, I can use the word inflated, uh, inflated definitions even, which have broadened the concept significantly from what it used to be a very narrow uh, definition of what classical diasporas uh, used to be. And here uh, I look at the concept of diaspora as of a network and not just a collection of garuts, what we historically uh, have been perceiving. And uh, to me, being a diaspora, as I define and as I explained there, is based on uh, active connection of uh, Armenians to their roots. It can be the homeland, it can be the historic homeland, historical homeland, what they have used to have, which has been lost, and to the concept of uh, Armenia, if we can say so, but not by origin of being just an ethnic, or I call it a non diaspora ethnic. So this is a policy, major policy committed, and uh, despite a lot of efforts uh, put in the diaspora homeland, or homeland diaspora relations, uh, the perception that all the Armenians by origin uh, worldwide are diasporans uh, should, it, it is a little bit misleading and this is what I question. I understand these differences and I differentiate them based on uh, whether they are in active connection to their cultural roots, first of all, again, to the homeland or the historical homeland or the Armenians, uh, or whether they uh, just stay Armenians by origin and they have no contact, no connection to the Armenian, to the Armenians of Amman. So that's what I uh, differentiate. So as I summarize here, I differentiate the diasporans from non diasporan ethnics. I borrow the term ethne from the from uh, Anthony Smith, uh, a known sociologist who has written uh, a lot about the concept of national identity. Uh, I emphasize 
starts the process of returning to the roots through roots, which is also uh, seen as a very important tool uh, because without going through the roots, understanding roots simply can be a, a, a surface-based study. It will not be an in-depth understanding of how this particular diaspora communities have been formed and understanding the roots can also help to engage this diaspora communities and the individual diasporans uh, connect them to the homeland and to the uh, to the to their cultural center i pay attention in the uh, significant attention in the book to the concept of return and here i want to specify that by saying diaspora return I do not mean uh, permanent physical repatriation. And to me, the, that per permanent physical repatriation is only one part of diaspora return. So I differentiate here the diaspora return in, in, in the forms of physical, virtual, imaginary, or we can call it metaphorical return. And uh, to me, if a person is a diasporan, that by default, by definition, means the person is in permanent return. And we can say that permanent return it is, is itself uh, dias, uh, being a diaspora. So that means a person who has contacts, connections of any kind uh, to his or her roots is uh, what I can consider diaspora. So later when I talk about the relationship between diaspora and the homeland, uh, first of all, I see that connection within the process of engagement of, of this tool and uh, specifically of the, proce the process of involvement or inclusion of diaspora by the homeland. Unfortunately, uh, the past 30 years have demonstrated uh, the underutilized nature of this connection. Uh, being a small nation state connected to a large global diaspora the, the policy of inclusion and engagement has not been successful. And of course, this is a never ending story in terms of uh, its room for further study and improvement of the, and, and, and investigation into the factors that contribute to, the, to this underutilized nature of the relationship. But at the same time, based on my understanding and the work I have done have been uh, studying the problem, uh, I can summarize, is based on the lack of trust, which itself is a derivative of unrealistic or less realistic expectations, which itself is a derivative of lack of uh, appropriate knowledge about each other, I mean the homeland and the diaspora. And I also, bring a con I also bring a concept here of contested leadership uh, by saying that the diaspora and the homeland, by the time of Armenia's independence in 1991, were not fully prepared for that cornerstone event. And even after this three decades, which have passed since that historical event, since 1991, the process of Mutual understanding is far from being effective, and this uh, the phenomena of phenomenon of contested leadership is still, to me, is still prevailing uh, between the two parts of the nation. I can also emphasize here that one of the factors to me which have contributed toward this. Uh, low effectiveness of the diaspora homeland engagement is the uh, his historically over the past decades uh, the is, is seeing the diaspora uh, based on the regional approach instead of the functional one which I present here. So what I advocate, what I uh, support or I suggest is the following functional areas uh, which should be 
the targets from the homeland as the policy maker of the Armenian diaspora relations from the from Armenia side. So one is to strengthen the sense of Armenian identity and to neutralize possible Armenophobia and anti-genocide attempts. And uh, when I mentioned the strengthen the sense of Armenian identity, there's also uh, one function I identify, which I will specify at the very end, that's also related to the policy committed by uh, throughout the years, which I've mentioned already. The third one, to educate Armenia's public about the diaspora. This is a heavily understudied area. And, uh, and trying to uh, establish connections and to develop the connections between Armenia and is the, the diaspora and the Armenian diaspora is often seen as a one-way connection so that the, the diaspora knows the army or, or should know Armenia as the homeland well enough. But at the same time, the engagement to be, to, for it to be effective also needs uh, knowledge of the other side about uh, about the diaspora, the knowledge of the home, homeland about the diaspora. And this is something I see as a major area for, uh, for work uh, with regard to the engagement of diaspora in, the, in, in Armenia and uh, in the perspectives also for transforming Armenia as the cultural, political and economic center of the global Armenianness if we can call it uh, the, the concept so. So the fourth one I, I identify here, I emphasize is to transform non-diaspora ethnic into diaspora. So I see this as an ultimate uh, objective, as an ultimate goal of the, of, of the policy making, of the whole policy making process. As I've said, we have two types of Armenians abroad, outside Armenia. We have the diasporans, which are, who are connected uh, culturally to each other, to different communities, to the homeland. And we have a large number of uh, Armenians by origin who have no connections, who keep no connections of Armenian origin to anyone or to the homeland. So this is one uh, function I identify which should be uh, among the priorities of policy making of diaspora's engagement. And the last one, last but not least, is to work toward integration of repatriates. This is already about those who physically move to Armenia to engage them already while they are already physically in the country to help them settle, to work with government, different government offices. Uh, so that their integration will be smooth uh, in the homeland, either their historical homeland or uh, those who are not originally from Armenia, to integrate in a new environment. Uh, for many of them, it's a new environment because, uh, first of all, of language and cultural barriers or differences. So uh, these are the main uh, focuses and the main points I would like to uh, present. Certainly the readers of the book will have more in-depth understanding of what I uh, argue for and to a certain extent also what I argue against. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, move forward to the discussion and also to have discussions at a later time in more thematic uh, discussions and events, sharing sessions. So this is what I wanted to share, Mr. Sarafem. It's interesting that, uh, as, you, as you also emphasize, your work is not just about Armenia. It's in many ways an academic, a new typology, right, within diaspora studies. Is it, do you see that way that what you're introducing has a broader implication for all diasporas. I mean, do, do, do you think these issues will be discussed in the future in, in, in comparative terms with other diasporas or, I mean, uh, in, in a useful way? And first, so that's a broader question. Uh, and the more specific question is that have you, I know you said you've, you've written on these issues in Armenia uh, over the years, but 
Have you discussed any more formal uh, contacts with Armenian academics on university platforms, amongst government circles, in the Armenian press, uh, as a with the sense of urgency that these issues matter because they go to the heart of our own survival as a nation? I mean, do you see that kind of reception on the part of Armenian authorities, or for that matter, within a diaspora, within large diaspora organizations like the AGBU or political parties like either the ARF or the, the Hunchaks or professional circles? Because what you are saying seems to have very serious implications about the very survival of Armenians in, 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 in the modern world. Uh, thank you very much for the two uh, very important questions. I will try to answer both of them. Uh, regarding the uh, application, possible application of this in other diasporas, in case of other diasporas, I can say to, a, to an extent it is possible. At the same time, uh, we, should, uh, we should always pay attention to the factors that have contributed to the formation of the Armenian diaspora. Certainly, the Armenian diaspora, uh, before the, the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, it used to be a trade diaspora. So the origin was mainly based on trade. Uh, but then, uh, because of the tragic events in the Ottoman Empire, the genocide, uh, the Armenian diaspora turned to be more a victim diaspora. Uh, so, over the past decades or a century, uh, it has also transformed so that from the, especially from the 80s, 90s, especially of the 20th century, a uh, significant part of the modern diaspora has become again a trade or labor diaspora. So, in terms of the origin, uh, the diaspora has different sub uh, kinds or sub forms. So uh, there are many other diasporas in the world, uh, again, as victim diasporas, for example, the, the Jewish diaspora or the trade diasporas as the Greek diaspora, it depends on the nature of the diaspora, but certain features I strongly believe can also be applied. Uh, regarding the, the second question, uh, the com uh, my communication with, uh, with policymakers and uh, within commun with communities and uh, different parts of that, our, the Armenian diaspora. I can say that I have uh, been trying to reach uh, the policymakers uh, by my by spreading the ideas, and uh, I used to work previously with the Minister of Diaspora, uh, and I have shared my understanding and my uh, view on the relationship with the uh, officials of the ministry. And then I have communicated also with uh, policymakers of the, within the previous uh, past several years, in the past two or three years also. And I have been uh, active also as a, a media contributor by providing uh, my view by spreading my views and my, under, my ideas and my understanding uh, in the Armenian media and in particular related to the Armenian diaspora relations. So I believe uh, such events as, uh, as, as uh, new publications, new books and new events which ignite the uh, interest uh, within the nation state of Armenia and also within the country and uh, the diaspora can facilitate more active communication between the two and most importantly can facilitate, uh, can strengthen that the understanding that there is nothing sta static. So this is a dynamic process. Uh, the relationship assumes transformation and changes over time. And uh, even certain categories or certain even terms and approaches should be reconsidered over time and be uh, an, an object of uh, discourse. And I will be happy to participate in any discussion which involves the concepts of identity, national identity, diaspora, homeland, space of belonging, 
which form the whole process of engagement between these two. I'd be happy to do that. Fantastic. Um, are there any plans of translating your work? Obviously, this is in English, but perhaps Armenian or any other language. Are there any plans underway that? Uh, I consider, I consider uh, first uh, translating it into Armenian. Uh, there is one, uh, one uh, consideration here I, I, I make. Uh, the book is written, first of all, I can say that the, the book being written in English uh, targets the audience, which is not that deeply, not only deeply involved in the process of uh, relations between Armenia and the diaspora, but also people who don't know much about Armenia. So certainly when translating into Armenian, some adjustments will be made to the structure of the book, but I do uh, consider that and I hope the process will be completed soon. And uh, I also think of uh, translate, translating the book into Russian, considering the uh, large uh, diaspora communities in the, in the Russian Federation and also different other parts of the former Soviet Union. Thank you. Um, well, look, this is the first launch in a sense of your work and uh, we will do everything we can to promote your work in the English speaking world and um, try and or, um, work with other organizations to provide platforms so that we can begin these debates that, uh, that go to the heart of diaspora communities as well as diaspora army relations. So I'd like to thank you for the work and I look forward to working with you in future. And I invite other Armenian organizations and uh, policymakers to join us in, 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 a, in a common endeavor for the, for the greater good. So thank you, Dr. Vardanyan for this presentation and good luck with your, with your work in, in the months and years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you.